there. Today we're going to talk about some survival tips for long flights. What do you need to do to make yourself comfortable? I'm Roseanne, and if you're new here, thank you for coming. I appreciate you joining us. So when you're on a flight, a lot of us sometimes just can't get into first class or even premium economy ends up being so expensive. So how do you make, <laughs> there's Nico, how do you make your economy seat really comfortable as you're flying for however long it is that your flight's going to be. I know that sometimes while your flight, you have two six hour flights together, it ends up being that you're traveling for 24 hours from door to door. It's a long day. So how do you make the most of what you have in your seat to make sure you're nice and comfy? So the first thing is clothing. You want to make sure that you're really comfortable with your clothes. What I like to do is always wear a tank top. I will always wear a tank top because you don't know what the weather's going to be like inside the airplane. It can change so much. So I wear a tank top and then I wear a, a jacket, something like this something like this. I have this really great wool jacket that's from Ibex and it is so comfortable and it's soft and it doesn't wrinkle and I really like this because I want to make sure that I have a zipper. My jacket has a zipper because that way I could take it on and off. <laughs> that way, if I want to, I could put it on this way with my hands like this. I think it's really important to make sure that you have your layers. And if you tend to be a little cold, then with your tank top, you can wear an outer shirt and also this sweater, something with a zipped up sweater. I also like to make sure that I have a scarf. So I have a scarf like this, pashmina, that works really great to give you an extra layer of warmth if your airplane happens to be freezing. Um, so everyone has a different body temperature, so you need to really know what your body temperature is so that you can dress accordingly because you want to be comfortable. A nice looking pair of yoga pants, something that are stretchy, those always work really great. The other thing that I recommend highly is wearing compression socks. Now I wore my compression socks from the day, from the minute I left my house to the minute I got home from my house. It was literally 24 hours when I was coming back from Scotland and I wore my compression socks the whole time. And it was great. I didn't get too hot. I didn't feel uncomfortable. It actually made me feel really comfortable. A story is this woman was talking about her knees really hurting on the plane because when your knees are bent a lot, sometimes they can get sore. She put on her compression socks and the pain went away. So that wasn't my experience, but it was hers. And I know that sometimes my knees do get a little sore on the airplane sitting for so long. So I wear the compression socks. And I also do walk up and down the airlines. I, I go to the bathroom a lot. I try to make sure that I drink a lot of water because drinking a lot of water and keeping yourself hydrated while you're flying helps everything work better. And you want, you want that. You want to be hydrated. You want to feel good. You want to be able to go to the bathroom. And so make sure that you walk around the airplane too because that's really helpful. The other thing is food. While you're on, when you're on a long international flight, they feed you and they feed you to correspond with the new time when you're going to be landing in. So that kind of helps your body adjust to jet lag. But I always like to make sure that I bring some extra snacks. While they do provide snacks for you, in fact, what they do a lot of times is that they'll have a snack station at the very back of the plane. So in between meals, the flight attendants might not come by other than to give you a little bit of water or maybe a little treat, but you can always go to the back of the plane and they'll have water, they'll have soda, they'll have some snacks for you. But I like to make sure I have my snacks just to make sure, even though I still like eating the food on the plane and I would do that. Um, so things like I'll bring some dried fruit, but you need to make sure that if you're going internationally or even to Hawaii, 
you eat it all up so make sure if you bring fruit dried or regular fruit that those get eaten or thrown away and you don't take them with you off the plane and i also have some almonds i would bring some almonds and of course i can't forget to bring chocolate and i always bring a little bit of chocolate just to have some snacks i like to do that i like to make sure that i eat and i like to make sure that i get hydrated as well so i always bring my water bottle with me and this water bottle actually has a little filter in here so i bring that with me when i'm traveling and um, while the water is usually great oh the water in scotland was really good um i still like to have my water bottle and i bring this with me and that way you can get uh, water at the airport you can fill up your water and make sure that you stay hydrated that's so important and it really helps with jet lag too to make sure that you're all hydrated now let's talk about sleeping um, you could always take a sleep aid um, an over-the-counter sleep aid or whatever it is that you like to do i personally don't like doing that although i really should <laughs> because it makes such a difference to get sleep on the plane getting to your destination i find i have the hardest time adjusting to sleep when i go from the united states to international i don't have as much trouble coming back but we need to have a little, I have this little pouch that I keep my sleep stuff in. And so what I have in here is an eye mask. I have an eye mask to make sure that if I do sleep that I keep the light out because that really, really helps me sleep. If I get light in my eyes, I totally wake up. And ear earplugs really help to keep the noise out if you don't have earplugs you can use your earbuds and listen to music or put some headphones on on top of your ears or put the earbuds in your ears and listen to soft music that really helps take out the noise so that you can sleep if you want to sleep through your meal service a really good idea would be to put down your tray and leave it open so that the uh, flight attendants can add your meal to that and you could have that later another really important thing to do to survive the long flight is to make sure you bring your cords and a little block because it's much better to be charging your phone in the airplane with a block other than using the straight usb because there can be some security issues if you just plug this in so make sure you use a block and that you can plug it in there you go <laughs> plug it in and um, usually on long flights you're going to have airplanes that have the plugs either under the seat or right in front of you right there and that would be really a good idea because when you land you want to make sure that your phone is fully charged you might need to access wi-fi access Access where you're going your GPS all of your information is on your phone that you'll need which is why you should always have a separate copy of your documents make sure that your passports your important information any important phone numbers anything that you would need would be on your person on your carry on your personal carry on items because you want to make sure that you have access to those in your carry on when you put under the seat in front of you you want to make sure it's nice and organized so all of your items that you need to access are easily accessible such as your charger like i just showed you your eye mask and the earplugs and your earbuds and then speaking of phones it's a really great idea to download your movies, download your series, even a YouTube video that you want to watch. Download those and that way you can watch them um, on your flight and you could have what it is that you want to listen to. Because sometimes the movies on the 
back of the seat, the entertainment from the flights, they just might not be as interesting as your own choosing, the, the items that you choose. So I definitely love to do that. That's my number one thing that I make sure that I do. Some other little random items that will help your flight go smoothly is to bring some hand sanitizer. I usually have this on guard. It smells good and it works really well. Um, I have these little toothpicks. Uh, dental cleaners, which is really helpful. These work really well. <laughs> and then I like to make sure I have Kleenex, just to always make sure that I have some Kleenex with me. Now, some other really good tips to remember. When you're on a long flight internationally, they usually feed you a breakfast or another meal before you land. It's usually an hour and a half to two hours before it lands. So you can expect to get a meal at that time. Make sure that after that meal is over and everything is put away, that you use the restroom. Make yourself use the restroom because when it lands, you just wanna gather your stuff up and you wanna head directly to passport control. You don't wanna stop and go to the bathroom and lollygag because the line could be really long or it could be really short. I mean, you're taking your gamble, but I personally like to make sure I go to the restroom, I get all my stuff in order, and I go directly to the passport control when I get off the plane. I like to make sure that I have either a purse or my little carry-on case that's attached to my phone where I can easily access my passport so I don't have to go rummaging through my purse or my backpack. If I, I'm usually carrying a backpack, but I don't want my documents there. So I make sure either a fanny pack or a front, a, a little purse or something that I can access my passport easily. So when I get off the plane, go into passport control, it's right there, ready to, ready to go. And the last tip is something that I've just recently learned, and it was a really great tip, is I am always gonna now pack melatonin, and I got this one that is 10 milligrams time, time released. Because when I went to Scotland last, I literally had such a hard time sleeping. And it wasn't until I took a melatonin because I read that sometimes to help jet lag, you need a little, you know, help with your melatonin production. So I, um, I took the melatonin, that time released one, and it really helped me sleep and, and kind of get into the groove of sleeping at a different time. So that was super helpful. And when I came back home, I also used it to make sure to get me back on track. So that was really helpful. I've never done that before, and I don't like to take things like that. But it worked, and it's going to be my go-to all the time, all the time. It's, you know, sleeping is such a challenge that you want to make sure that you don't make it worse when you're traveling because you want to sleep, you want to be hydrated, you want to eat good foods. The other thing I love to do is make sure that I take my vitamins when I travel, take my vitamins before I get on the plane, make sure that my immune system is healthy because with all the germs in the air, even though they recycle it, you don't want to get sick. Unfortunately, I haven't been sick, thank goodness. So I hope all of these tips have been helpful. You want to survive the long, long flights internationally. Um, in economy, there's ways that you can make yourself super comfortable and you're saving money and spending your money on your trip and destination is worth it. It's worth getting there. I hope these tips have been helpful and that they're interesting. Do you have any tips that you do when you travel that um, you'd like to share? I'd love to hear them. And if you need any help with your travel plans, let me know. So take care. Have a really great day and ciao for now. Bye. Bye.